Welcome to Alien Theorist Theorizing. We got a special interview episode today. I'm Braden. I'm Zell. I'm Andrew. And when you're out of aliens and shit to talk about, you find a new guest. This guy. Hi. My name is Evan Stone. Hey. I'm a millionaire. Hey. On the mansion and the yacht. Yeah. He, uh, when yeah. He's famously known from uh, Human Sexapede. Pirates. <laughs> I remember Pirates. Yeah. I forgot about that movie. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know who he is, he's a, uh, you know, it's American pornographic film, not actor, star. Oh, star. Yeah. Male performer of the year three times. Three times. And you know, three decades, three decades, three hold, decades of doing it right. And now it. I want to give it back. I want to give it back. I'm running for Congress. We're going to get this out of the way fast. I'm running for Congress, <laughs> Nevada, District 1, June 11th. I need your vote. There's three other people running <laughs> against me. Two guys have already run and lost. The other guy's a comedian. He has never been funny except for now that he's running for Congress. Well, I'll lock him up. Now, Loser. that being said, <laughs> let's get on with the aliens now. Okay. When I'm finally president, because what I'm doing first is Congress, and then I'm going to be governor, and then I'm going to be president. Of course. Um, there's a reason why all the presidents get gray as soon as they get that debriefing. Right? It looks like they've aged like 10 years after that, de that debriefing. Oh, Obviously, yeah, they, yeah. you know, oh, all yeah. the information about whatever happened to Kennedy and, and all this other stuff is like, you know, you're like, yeah, Well, they're wow. like, if you don't follow suit, the same thing's going to happen to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> and so, I mean, I believe, you know, and I believe that the government still thinks, you know, that the, as the populists were stupid. And so, you know, that you, uh, but I think we've progressed to that point now where no one's going to, like, see aliens and all of a sudden go get their gun and start shooting them uh, and make them hostile or, you know, it's, it's like, and that they obviously, whatever technology it is to be able to transverse galaxies, you have to be able to move faster than light speed to get here. Yep. So, I mean, to have that, that's enormous amount of energy enormous amount of resources that they're maybe even doing it some some way different than how we figure a travel is a distance is and so you know for them just to visit the planet it's like we're like a really really small planet in a small little galaxy we're not we can't even figure out if we got like nine planets or not right true. the ninth one's yeah. like out there somewhere right so i mean that's we can't even figure out our own what's yeah going they, they backtracked on their own solar one. system pluto don't care yeah with their own solar system so I mean, we're a long way from making, we're, you know, we're making big steps and stuff and, and uh, finding out information about uh, quantum physics and stuff. But, you know, it's a slow process and it's a learning curve. And so uh, they've, they've been here. Yeah, they've actually been here. Have we got some other technology? Well, yeah, I mean, we didn't all of a sudden just went from 1964 to going to, uh, from 1964 having um, vacuum tubes to, you know, solid state using silicon like overnight for no raisin. They dropped it here. Yeah. The I mean, was. Silicon did revolutionize your industry. So, <laughs> you know, your, 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 your friend's wife could enjoy me and I'm not even there. <laughs> That's great. Uh, it's funny because, yeah, I guess if we're, you know, if some new Space Age Palmer, you're a silicone expert, I guess. So, like, oh, yeah, you're, yeah. you're a yeah. guy we could call, right? Um, so did you grow up in Nevada? No, no, no. Uh, so I grew up in Michigan, uh, raised on a farm, raised horses, chickens, worked at a rodeo and then a slaughterhouse and then went to college there. Then went to Texas and kind of grew up in Texas, like a male stripper for 18 years there. Oh, wow. You and played, then out to you California football too, didn't you in college? Oh yeah. Yeah. For, that was for WMU. I got, I got all oh. fucked up. It was funny because yeah. so, when when you were reading all your we were reading all your job titles before Zell was saying he's like it's like this is like the intro to Happy Gilmore. <laughs> first I, it all. <laughs> first I was a forklift attendant, then a gas station attendant. No, 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 at Pepsi Cola mechanic. Yeah, yeah, it's Pepsi Cola. <laughs> and so how I got fired with that is like uh, I was getting really good at driving that forklift. I could spin that thing around. It's like uh, so when you have for for the orange juice containers, you put them all in a pallet and you jump off and you wrap them all in plastic, right? And then you pop the thing up and we were going like four, four, five, four things tall, right? On these, uh, on the forklifts. And so I'm spinning around the corner and I'm boom, boom, up there and I flip up there in the side, but I catch the corner of it and it rips the whole side up. And so orange juice falls down from like 40 feet. Ooh. So it's all over all the other pallets, which means I got to clean all this other stuff up and, and all that other stuff. But at that point, 
uh, I was going to join the union and they loved me and I was already a speaker and stuff for them. I went to their meetings and stuff and got up there and just, you know, talked from their heart about, you know, how I thought we all worked together as a team, blah, 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 management and, and people, not even knowing what, you know, what, what the meeting and stuff was about. And so they were going to put, make me a team leader. So Pepsi Cola fired me right away <laughs> before, before my probation period is over for 90 days. Coke so I was like, ah, oh, I'm learning how the system works already. Uh, Maybe just, somehow I could just like fuck and not have to do this. What uh, <laughs> what position did you play when you were at Western Michigan? Okay, so in high school we went all state, and I was a, a halfback. But okay. in college they put me in defense as a linebacker, and I was like, wow, this fucking job is easy. You don't have to memorize all these plays. <laughs> wait for a hole to open up. Just gotta hit. Look for before. another hole. Follow your blocker in. You just look for the ball and kill the guy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Evan, uh -oh. you still you still with us? Why do you pause it? You let go? No. He knew too much. This guy's no. too much. I hope I hope he's hope. just still. Oh yeah, hopefully yeah, it, it might be. He, he's 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 a wild card. And listen, yeah, you're this is hundred percent true. Yeah, right. I don't know. From what I know of him, this could be all again. I don't know. Just but. Uh, if oh, oh hopefully we no, well, no. listen, hey, listen, this is this is gonna be a wild one and if you're He's in nevada in i love this just guy. like just like this guy stuffs ladies you better get out there and stuff that ballot box yeah <laughs> vote for evan stone hey, make, uh, make sure you like it, you're gonna stuff ladies like make sure guy. you like his platform no. all right we can't give you we can't give you advice make sure you like his platform and then he vote probably him. will though yeah, he was giving us a little taste before we yeah. signed on. Listen, he's you, you he's need people about... with character in in uh, in politics, right? You need people that are funny. I think he'll clean up the swamp, drain it. Yeah, drain it. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask him if he would, uh, if he like. I wanted to ask him if he would be like, if he's ever thought about having a sexy encounter with the extraterrestrial. Be the first question like we ask when we get him back here. Hopefully. He's a good guy to put forward for that, right? Like he would represent us well. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like three decade best actor. Yeah, I mean that uh, he's one of the guys that you would send, not one of the three of us. Like you got to put won... your best foot forward in that situation. Yeah. yeah, he he's in the AVN Hall of Fame. That's crazy, right? Um, yeah, <laughs> best single best single performance in two thousand nine for Pirates two. I remember Pirates, the first one. I remember that. The, the other ones. What did you say, Andrew? The human sexapede? Yeah, human sexapede. Yeah, I don't remember Fucking that one. kills me. Uh, well, I mean, while we're hopefully... Hey, he... oh, 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 hold on. This ain't Avatar XXX. Yeah. <laughs> Seinfeld, Peter... Seinfeld, the triple X parody. The poor Nazi. <laughs> No sex for you. Oh, we gotta ask. That's what he said. That's funny. Uh, oh, this ain't good. Ghostbusters. He was Peter Vankman. Oh, it should have been Peter like Wankman or something like that. Oh yeah. 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 Why? That would have been good. That's 2011. That was Wank a term. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. Oh yeah. Sure. But Wank's been a term. Um. For yeah, I wanted term. to ask him like, because uh, you know what his position on disclosure was, is doggy. You know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> always always there. from behind you like that i what? did like that you said i you wanted to know his position on my oh, doggy yeah and i was like doggy. It took me about eight seconds oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and i was gonna bring up like since we're on the topic of uh, we're just waiting for this guy to come back on we're talking adult film industry uh, i sent these guys an adult video today <laughs> the most wild oh, shit you ever no. seen this guy's an alien, man. He was filling up. With should some I put high it? Alchem. Should I put it on YouTube and guess <laughs> no, officially removed? Not. No, do not. That's Patreon uh, only content. Yes, right there, yeah. Everybody. Basically, hey! let's okay. go. Okay, all right, guys. Remember, I, I, I said about the aliens, right? Yeah, they're out here. Yeah, I mean, I guarantee that. You know too much. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Uh, no, I was just kidding. No, I meant illegal aliens. Of course. Yes. Yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. Yes, yeah, so politically yeah, correct you aliens. You can't say too much. Everything's everything will be fine. Uh we were um we were just just before you 
uh, you came back on. We were just talking about uh, this ain't Ghostbusters. Um, your character was Peter Vankman. Um, we were kind of we are, you know we didn't want to be critical, but we we're like, wouldn't it have you know we were thinking Peter Wankman would have been a little fit, but you know. <laughs> if there's ever a, a, a follow up, twenty twenty. Yeah. No, no, here. but the the, the guys that the guy was uh, the guy that was directing that was uh, Axel Braun, right? I, I believe it was Axel, and uh, he would mess around with the names, like you know Spock wasn't called Cock or something like that. It was just you know <laughs> straight up, straight up, the, straight up the thing. And that that and uh, the other guys that played had no idea what even uh, what that movie was even about. They never even what? seen it. Yeah. I mean, we made him watch it beforehand. I mean, the yeah. director made him watch it beforehand. Met, but I nailed it, dude. I wanted so much. I wanted so much to push all those bookshelves down, and and the grips. The grips are like, please, man, don't do it. I mean, the director would would love me if you did that, but we'll be forever cleaning these books up. I was like, I love these guys. I can't do it, but oh, uh, hey, for the you art, probably secured some votes there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you can't be a butthole, man. I mean, we're all we're all there doing a job, you know. If you're just trying to hmm. show off and, and stuff, but I mean, they're all lined up perfectly, and they were like, "Careful, don't touch the bookshelves; they might fall over." And it was like, <laughs> "Really?" <laughs> <laughs> so, being from Nevada, like, uh, I mean, Nevada's got a rich alien history. Have you ever uh, got out down to you know Area Fifty One, checked out the back the back gate there? Or any of the alien sights and sounds that, that Nevada has to offer? No, no. But I got friends that I, I, I mean, allegedly have friends that work there. Of course. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And in in like the the fire department and stuff. So. Oh. And what allegedly have so, these friends told you? Yeah. What information well, do you know? What, what they they what they have said and what they've been on the base is like straight up, you know, straight up uh, military base. I mean, they they got stuff that goes on. Uh, but they they have their own fire department for their landing strips, right? There's no, a I fire department for out. everything, and then there's a fire department just for this area. Makes sense. So it's like you know sensitive stuff were to crash down that would be just these guys are firemen that are already cleared. Well, he says know. these guys don't do anything; they just sit there and they got they've got their own pool hall. Uh, I mean, allegedly a pool hall, a bowling alley, <laughs> just two lanes, yeah. and uh, I mean there's no drinking and stuff. But you know there's books and. Yeah, Probably if you ever wanted to write a book, ball yeah. or something in there. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. Oh, you know. Yeah, yeah. You oh, know. yeah, yeah. We've, hey, well, we, I know firefighters. We've been to the back <laughs> gate. We've been to the back gate. We we went right up to it. What did, did you go at that one time when everybody went? No, we no. we just we were in Vegas and we rented a rented a car and we drove up and we were up there. We there was another. How close can you get? Well, there was another van before us who actually touched the gate, which is a no no. And then we, we were driving out with them, and then the fucking white pickup trucks came flying out of the ditch, and they chased us all the way out. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, we went to the, there's a restaurant in um, the little alien uh, that's like kind of like right nestled right by the back, the back, the black gate. What's it? It's Ray, it it's Ray, Ailey Inn? Ailey Inn. Yeah, Ailey, yeah. the Ailey Inn. Uh, What's it, Inn or Rachel, Motel? Rachel, Nevada. Ah, it's, uh, it's, uh I don't know what it, I don't know if there's a, there's a little cafe and the food. I mean, I hate to give it a bad review, but the food sucks. Listen, <laughs> all right, terrible. it's a it's a it's ra, it's run by mercenaries. Let's put that's it. That's what, what we, it is. That's what we. That what we. <laughs> and that's what we'd like you to get to the bottom. Of, Who uh, runs the little alien? Because you go yeah. there and a guy looks like he's straight. He's got fucking military boots on. He's like, "How you boys doing?" Yeah, you know, the, the and the old lady, <laughs> the old lady that allegedly runs it, came up to our table and said, "Listen." Today's not the day to fuck around, boys. Don't fuck around. Someone just got shot. And then she left. And then these like mercenary guys cooked us food. And we were like, what is going on here? We we're like, what is this place? So there's something going on. It's a front for something. And we need you to get to the bottom of it. All right. Absolutely. Well, I mean, at a federal level, that's something I'd definitely be able to, <laughs> to address. Every guy, I'd be like, hey, I'm brand new to Congress. I need some information on Area 51. <laughs> Yeah. How do you think that would go down? Can you put us in Space Force? No, no. I demand information. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Always demand. Uh, demand. Well, let's start small. Be like, I I want all the information about the alien, uh, the tiny (laughs) motel outside Area 51. You you know, just get your foot in the door, right? I'm sure there's some rabbit holes down there. Um, One of the things we were talking about before is uh, legalizing uh, sex work. 
in yes. Nevada and all the sister states. Well, no, no, no okay. So uh, to make this really to make this really work, okay. So I got friends going to work at the casino. John mm-hmm. beats a beats her up. Uh, the casino doesn't do anything. The police don't do anything. The guy gets away with beating up a girl and not paying the girl for her work. And uh, that's just that's just working girls, you know. And there's also the sex trafficking. And so all the money is spent on sex trafficking. It's not doing anything. So the only way to do this is to regulate it. Like our industry is heavily regulated. And we've already gotten a working example of something that works, what's going on over here uh, uh, in just one county here in Nevada. And so it already works at a county level. So, I mean, we need to expand that out to have another county level, another county level. And it, it's for everyone's safety. I mean, prostitution has been around since the beginning of time. Rules well, this trade. profession, Rules they trade. don't make that stuff up because it's real, yeah. right? And so uh, if you don't regulate it, then it's just going to continue. And if you don't care anything about children, and if women actually have a right to their own body, then, you know, of course, men can be prostitutes too. So I say men can have their own bodies, things too. I've been a prostitute, but no one's ever called me. It's just <laughs> weird. Yeah. <laughs> but no, but, but seriously, I mean, and that's how, you, that's how you take care of it. And so uh, I will try to set some stuff up when I'm in the House seat. And then when I uh, take over the governor's seat here in Nevada, I, I will make it work um, at a state level. And then I'll go get our sister states like Arizona or something like that to have it try like one county in their state and see if that works. And just go from there. No, uh, no. Then, you know, once uh, then, you know, you might even have to do it like a convention of the states where we have, you know, three fourths of the states that decide to want to make this thing and make it a constitutional amendment. If the government doesn't want to, you know, if the, you know, the government doesn't want to do it for whatever reasons, if for the left of the reasons or the right reasons, for whatever reasons, it, it needs to be done. I got, I got wolves at the door. <laughs> hmm. Brother, those might be skinwalkers Cujo. here in Nevada. Cujo. Cujo, no. Uh, yeah, it's interesting because, uh, you know, we've done the, you know, the alien highway there out there. And we were talking about the alien jerky. Like you said, a shame, no, no real alien jerky. Um, the uh, right, it would be soil and green. It'd be people jerky, right? Because yeah. the aliens, they like they would take, they would grab us, and they would tan our hides, and then hang this, you know, human skin up, and then you know, jerky flavor it, and yeah. sell at the jerky store. So, Evan, are you running for uh, like libertarian, Republican? What do you? I'm on Republican. I'm Republican. Republican. Uh, actually, I'm a libertarian, but I want to win. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And so, if I'm a Democrat, no one cares. Hey, a porn star running for Democrat, no one cares. Porn star rubbing is Republican. It's a whole different animal. Absolutely. And we're about to unleash, we're about to unleash some just some crazy commercials and stuff, which is going to get me in trouble with the uh, going to get me in trouble with um, uh, the people in charge of like those kind of time commercials probably. Is Might get fined, but I will get the instant uh, well, notoriety. Sh- shake it up a bit, yeah. You need a little yeah. publicity. Yeah, I mean, whatever. Well, because everybody I've talked to, I mean, everybody I've talked to, they're all talking the same thing. We don't have any money, right? No one has any money, and then the people in the government's like, "No, oh, you're you don't understand. You have all kinds of money." Where everyone's like, "What?" And you know, everyone's tired. It's very you know, very uh, Orwellian when the government's it's double think. You know, double, was it double double talk, double think, double think. And uh, when the government just tells you stuff over and over again and try to make you believe it when you know the truth is something totally different. And so uh, my approach is uh, in the government is that everybody just do whatever the hell you want. Right. And the government should be out of your business. There shouldn't be like regulation. It shouldn't should be like laws made up by governing bodies that are not elected that the government just says, OK, you know, these guys are in charge of like uh, climate control for this state at a federal level and they 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 make their own laws. Mm. And so that, I mean this is this has got to stop. This this sub level. I mean, obviously I want conservation uh, and environmental safety because everybody wants toilets that aren't, aren't going to explode and food that's not poison. Yeah. But uh, but at this point uh, the government's like way way out of control. They've already spent, you know, what twice our twice the budget they just took in. And the money they're taking in is ridiculously ridiculous money. Uh, and, you know, so in helping the rest of the country, uh, I want to put uh, veterans hospitals and mental hospitals. Not I want to take I don't want to take hospitals and add more mental stuff to them or add more veteran stuff to them. I want to build our own hospitals. So, so we send what I'm not sure how porn math works. So we sent 60 billion dollars to uh, 
to the proxy war, right? So that would yeah. have built a uh, modern hospital is $200 million. So that would have put three hospitals in every 50 states. Uh, yeah. and so, I mean, and then I, I would not have the government, I would not have like the government you know, have biddings and stuff. I would have the Army Corps of Engineers build them, have them done. They would be finished and then gift them to the states. Here's your hospital. And then it would have a federal database. Yeah. I mean, listen, maybe that's a little, something maybe like a little better. Asylums are something that really need to come back. With all yeah, the yeah, yeah. opioid crisis and addiction crisis we're dealing with, asylums would be. To, they have we such... gotta have we gotta have more hospitals if you're gonna uh, go ahead and allow this kind of behavior and this kind of when I say allow this kind of behavior, the, the laws are written by whatever society's behavioral norms are, right? Those are laws that you make. I mean, if you were in if you were in um, Mongolia back way back then, murder was fine. Oh, the guy pissed me off, so I killed him. <laughs> okay, well, good on you. But you know, as society moves on, you know, and, and stuff. And so as a society, we should have moved on beyond the prostitution and stuff. And we've also moved on to the fact like it's your body. You can do whatever you want and do whatever drugs and stuff you want. But a lot of people don't have either uh, the moral responsibility or the physical responsibility to be able to handle situations like that. And they need help. And there's people out there that are willing to help them. And there needs to be hospitals and stuff to accommodate this. Yeah, the asylum's got a bad rap throughout history because of the bottom well reason. i mean you but, gotta get you gotta get you gotta get the riddler out of there you gotta, you gotta get, get all that shit out, out but yeah, yeah. You gotta get those guys out because yeah. otherwise it's just yeah. you know just mayhem because don't we, use those places for mk ultra yeah. experiments exactly yeah. Yeah. i mean we, we, learn, learn from more history lobotomies. Hey, all right? it's a little bit of acid over yeah. a long <laughs> period of time yeah <laughs> um yeah it's 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 really interesting to you know, you see this like government that's almost like out of touch with the people. And one of the, we're from Canada, but it's the same. I've seen it in the States, especially like laws where it's like, you know, the decriminalization of marijuana. And then it's like, you know, you can go to Washington state, you can go to a cannabis store, buy cannabis. It's also legal in Oregon. But if you bring it from Washington to Oregon, that's a federal God crime, damn. my friend. And you're in big shot. You're like, it's never it was never it's never it's ne like that seems like such an out of touch policy of like uh like you know one of those things that is just such an oversight like just decriminalize it then if all these well, states... no, okay, yeah, but the, the feds need to understand they need to do that but they don't want to piss off the the far far right which is understandable right yeah. so uh it can you know, if that's your money and that's what the party's all about it's so i mean so the way to do that would be that in order to control this Again, I, I don't like the big government thing, but it needs to be, you know, uh, it needs to be at a federal level uh, decriminalized, right? Just taken off the books. These people should be allowed out of jail because at or this just, point, these drugs, these drugs should be replacing opioids. Or, yeah. yeah, or not, or or just like the federal go be like at a state level, you decide. You represent yeah, yeah, that you yeah, vote because they don't want to. They don't want to make. They don't yeah. want to make that decision, right? Yeah, but that's going to be even though. Uh, because they would have made that decision before, like uh, uh, when Roe v. Wade, uh, yeah. you had an opportunity when the uh, they controlled the House, the Senate, and uh, the executive branch to make a change in the law. But everyone just passed on that because the government doesn't want to make because you know ever since they fucked up on prohibition, they're kind of scared to do stuff. You know? Yeah. <laughs> didn't they, didn't they just decrease the severity from a Schedule One to a Schedule Three federally though in the states? Yeah, yeah, they brought it down. They yeah. brought it down. So I mean, that's yeah. a step so in the right they, direction, but they'll they'll shoot you uh, in the morning in a right. firing squad, but paintball guns. So you know, fifty yeah. caliber. <laughs> that a, a lot of bruising, you know, some sand clothing. It's less, just less, less lethal. No big deal. Yeah, but I mean, it hurts. I mean, you learn a lesson. Yeah. Oh yeah, no shirts either. Bear skin. Yeah, yeah, bear skins. Oh yeah. Always. That's, that's how we the way play. they do it. Just your mask and bare skin. Bare yeah, skin. Then you appreciate, you know, of how how <clears throat> being stupid is painful. Oh yeah, we have, <laughs> absolutely. We've had uh, we've had like our fire. <laughs> <laughs> our our friend group, and I mean, it's been historical. So I imagine if we ever played again, it would, the rules would still stay. Uh, but we've always played when we've ever played paintball all together at birthday parties or whatever, uh, or bachelor parties. The rule has always been shorts and t-shirt, nothing yeah. else. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, you Ooh. know, 
Yeah, you just well, masks. You gotta, you gotta wear the yeah. mask. You gotta wear the mask. Well, no, you gotta wear a mask. Or you lose a fucking eye. Right. And uh, just you just you just go home looking like you got a bad case of ringworm. <laughs> like yeah. Everywhere you're like, oh, oh yeah, I am, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I so, up. We we did the same thing, but we wore pants because you know that uh, out there in Texas it was a little rough. There's yeah. burrs and stuff. You know, you're running through the ramble, well, the ramble, and you got to protect the stuff. Goods. So, so I told the guys because there's only one way around this hill. You come, both come around this one side, right? And I said, listen. You guys just hold your position, right? I'm going to scale this hill. I'm going to get all the way up and I'm going to get behind them, right? And then when I get behind them, I have this whistle. I'll blow this whistle. Then you guys start laying down some fire and I'll just come up behind them and kill them all. They go, okay, great. Well, okay. All right. Everybody's all high. And then, so I, I'm up this hill and I look down there and they're all like, so I get over the top of the hill and then I hear, bam, 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 bam. I'm like, what the fuck is that? So I get all the way down the hill and I come around this corner and I'm ambushed, right? And I'm there and there are six guys and they just like they just lit me up, dude. I'm so I'm, I'm stuck from all sides, and they're like, "Oh no, we just got bored, we got tired away, we so we thought we'd just go ahead and advance." I was like, oh, "That's not that's not the plan. That wasn't the plan." <laughs> the uh, Evan, you'll love this, and this is hand to God. This is a true story. This is real. I don't think they do it anymore, but they did at the paintball place where we all grew up. They had uh, they had different fields, and one of the fields was called D Day. D Day. No, they yeah. still got it. Do they still have it? Yeah. And they put you. One team is in a shipping container, and the other team is like a hundred yards away across an open field, fortified. And they play the songs, and you you hear the other team shooting the sea can, and the door just drops, and so you're all funneling out of the sea can, just getting, getting absolutely mowed down, peppered, and there's no coverage for about a hundred yards. So you're just running, just like ah 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 ah, ah just getting peppered. Uh, you're like, well, we're all dead instantly. And well, the, uh, oh my the god, that's to gotta hide. be that's gotta, gotta be great in the fortified position, yeah. right? You're just like loaded. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, check yeah. it out. Yeah. It was it was done as a history lesson. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it worked. Uh, yeah, I always loved that one. Good memory. I was like, yeah, yeah. They played like the epic music, and then they get countdown like ten, nine. Eight, and then they're like, Fuck, we're landing, boys. And then, <laughs> yeah, get the Nazis. <laughs> it's funny in Canada, yeah. <laughs> well, Canada, like, Canada yeah. stormed the beach. No, no, you guys had your own beach. Oh, yeah, yeah, you guys had your own beach. You guys yeah, had yeah. your own beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, they wrote all the war crimes about us, like all the war crimes are because no, of no, you guys, you guys, yeah, you guys had like the, one of the toughest beaches. Canada had a couple wars, so like they just pent out a whole nation's aggression for hundreds of years. On this. <laughs> well, I mean, if you know, if you, I mean, if you guys wouldn't have helped the the British have the Indians shoot us, then hey, listen, kind of... I think people learned a lesson. You don't fuck with the hockey season, all right? Don't yep. interrupt the hockey season, all right? And everything playoffs. Good. <laughs> you fuck with the playoffs, right? Um. One of the questions I had for you is, uh, you know, we've we've talked about we've been doing this for Juno Beach. years and years. Um, we've talked about there's a lot of like, you know, there's different varying encounters from horrific uh, alien encounters where people get abducted and you know probed and experiments and all like they have horrifying accounts. Um, everything like everything across the world works, but there is a small section of, of encounters uh, that we always call sexy encounters, where it's. Where it's, uh, you know, some sort of person comes back. They're like, hey, listen, I wasn't bad. I didn't want that to do it. Bad. They wanted me to do it. Like, yeah. It was pretty good. I, I had like, you know, someone comes out with some crazy sex oils. You know, they're like probes. They're like, she was looking like a six foot three Nordic woman, but a little off. I don't know. But it was the best night of my life. Um, have you ever thought about being our ambassador? Uh, if uh, aliens come down for, you know, an interspecies erotica between uh, alien life. I feel like you I would the hope they pick me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know who, who makes the decision. Does the, does the earth decide who goes? I believe, I space? believe actually we decide. In space. This podcast well, hey, decides who, who goes. Get elected and you make that decision. <laughs> you get to be that guy. We got to put our best foot forward here, you know? Yeah, absolutely. We can't have some guy go up there and just fuck it up, you know? Three-time male performer of the year. Let's go. Yeah. Well, you know, here's the deal. I mean, it, it, you know, you're tired of the government fucking you. You want to, and it doesn't take a professional to tell you they're fucking you. So send me up there because what the fuck you got to lose? Yeah. That's the commercial I'm going to make, That's but great. I'm going to bleep all the fucks out of it. 
That's great. And then it's gonna be I'm gonna publish it. So well you can oh, keep yeah. you can keep the fucks in if you do it as a podcast ad. Well no, yeah, of course. I'll I'll give I'll give you, you guys. You need, you need a couple, yeah, you need an uncensored version. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. who cares? I mean, is 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 it one of those things where it's like they're like, oh, it's not against the rules of? Uh... No, no, it actually is against against federal law to be doing that. Like, you can't do that stuff like that. So wow, I'm going to do it. Ain't I'm gonna, no, no, wait, wait. <laughs> I'm going to do it the right way, and then I don't know if somehow it gets released the other way. I don't know. Oh yeah. Sometimes those yeah. things happen. Yeah, it got released. That's it has crazy. Not, it has nothing to do with yeah. you. Yeah, you can't do it. No, no. I mean, I can't control everything. Yeah. Yeah, you can only you can only do what you can you only do were, so much. You're gonna do, yeah. Yeah, you can only do so much. Can you can't control anyone else and what they post, right? Yeah, there's a lot of good. That would be like here. censor. That would be like censorship. Yeah, and you're like, hey, wait a minute, that's I didn't approve that. Approved by <laughs> not Evan Stone. <laughs> no, but on the commercials and stuff, they do have to have that disclaimer at the end. Uh, I believe that was the uh, Supreme Supreme Court decision when they said that the corporations were people. I forget what the. Yeah, we've talked about that before, but corporations, yeah, they're their own entity, right? For better so, or worse, I mean, decision that is, but it's also we've this... we've talked about that being like you know it's it's also scary because a lot of times then that corporation it's like you talk to the people who work for these things and they're like yeah you know I necessarily don't believe but the corporations like consume profit it doesn't matter like it just kind of steams forward well and there's no one as a corporation as an individual there's no one really accountable no exactly right the corporation you can see the corporation the only thing you do the corporation is put it out of business yeah yeah corporations yeah, are weird we... because we have we have governments that support and bail out corporations and we call it you know that's capitalism and bailouts and quantitative easing and then if you have a government that bails out citizens they call it socialism <laughs> they're like we yeah, can... we, we we went through a period of bailout things. Uh, I think it was the Bush years when the uh, bailouts of the banks and all this, uh, all the money guys, they all made bad investments, and then they were like, "Oh, we're going to go bankrupt." And then then the the government's like, oh, "Well, you know, you yeah, guys we'll do give in. us a lot of money for our campaign, so can't have you guys go bankrupt. We'll go ahead and give you government money. Don't yeah. worry about paying it back, ever." Yeah, huge bonuses all around. <laughs> happen, yeah, dude. Happen oh yeah, oh yeah. Forget the bonuses. Yeah, right before we're going to go bankrupt, make sure we pay our bonuses. Yeah. That well, just that happened. Happened we want a again. reputation of we don't want a reputation of not doing a good business. Of course, it happened again in COVID. During, in, up here in Canada, there was huge government bailouts of like mega corporations because like oh we're gonna lose all these profits, we're gonna have to fire all these people. So <laughs> there's so many companies got hundreds of millions of dollars, and then like six months later, they just laid off their employees anyway. Anyways, and people are like, like oh yeah, but. Eh. They're like, ah, what are you gonna do? Yeah, they're like, wow. Nah, we, you, even with all that money, we still couldn't. Make yeah, it just work. couldn't but make thanks it work. Anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah what, what, what wasn't I? I might be talking out of my ass a little bit, but I'm pretty sure that happened to WestJet or Air Canada, one of our like big airlines up here. And they laid off. They still laid off everybody. And then like the CEO took like a sixty million dollar. Oh, well, it happens uh, all the time. Yeah, and it's it like, yeah, and it's like you were so broke that you were about to fail, and you required money from the government. Dude, it's, that's just like all governments during times of like great financial stress. The government always gets a raise, always. If you're a government well, employee, you're always getting that three to five percent every year. Well, you know, and that's yeah, you know, that's that government unions down here, which is a, it's just like it's a no-brainer. There's no such, no such thing as a government union. Because the union, you know, they negotiate the pay and stuff like that. And so there's no one on the side of the government negotiating for the for the government side. So the union for the government for the government workers goes, hey, we want a pay increase. And then the government goes, OK, sure. Yeah. Anything yeah. else? We want paid vacations. OK. We want all health care. Okay. You want six weeks? Sure. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Th oh, three percent raise? Want. No problem. Three percent, three point yeah, five yeah. percent tax increase. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Always way to get it. No, back. and now you know the tax code is it's gonna be another thing with uh that's how the government re rewards uh their donors and stuff like that. They give them tax breaks in their industries and then you know they give them money for their campaigns and so it's you know it's a reward system and stuff and the tax code is an excellent way to do all that. And the reason why it is five thousand dollars five thousand page five thousand pages, right? That the last one was uh tax Probably. code is because um 
uh, you have to cover up all that reward stuff. And so the way to do that would be to have a flat tax, progressive flat tax, and then everyone pays the same tax. Uh, but that's not going to happen because the government's never going to vote to change that. So that'll be another thing that as president, I will try to get the states to do a convention of the states and change that. So flat tax. Yeah, because we didn't have a, we didn't, yeah, we didn't have a, we didn't have a tax, a uh, federal tax until we invaded Canada in 1776. That was your Hold first that. No, it's a different war. Yeah. No, World War One. Yeah. <laughs> that's that. World yep. War One. World War One was in Canada too. That's they introduced a one percent income tax, and then it was three percent, really? and, th and then it was five percent, and then it was eight yeah, they... percent, and now it's at eighty <laughs> percent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that. and then when the war was over, they were like, "Yeah, but look at all this money we look got. At that money. We can just have, we can just have like no. social programs and socialism." No, they started with we need that money to rebuild from the war. Okay, and then when they re what? rebuilt, they went, "Oh, but we like that money." So now we're going to, yeah, we're going to offer a couple new programs. Like how much do those programs cost? Oh, this amount. But you're like, well, you're bringing in way more. They're like, yeah, but we're going to put that, we're going to expand the government by tenfold. And then, <laughs> then over and over for a hundred years. Fuck. Like it's yeah, it happens here too. It's crazy. Yeah. In Canada, like the, the states and Canadian tax systems are very similar depending on the province or state or whatever. But where Canada fault like we get huge taxes post income tax. So post income tax, like we have huge sales tax, twelve percent. There's tax on liquor and all these like excise tax on gasoline. Like ga like for a liter of gasoline here, it's like you pay like seventy five percent of the cost is through different taxes. It's crazy. And they just build it up yeah. through the corporation, through the delivery, and by the time you get to it, you're paying whatever dollar eighty, whatever it is right now. But a uh, dollar seventy six, a dollar forty of that is just like stacked taxes from the start to finish, and it's just, it's insane, and it just keeps going. Yeah, up. all our all our gas taxes are supposed to fix our roads, but then uh, they asked for more money to fix the roads, and we said, well, what happened to the tax money? We go, we needed that money for other stuff. So we put that in the general funds, <laughs> but you still got to fix your roads. Yeah, they built all the overpasses in the 50s, and they're all falling apart. Like, we could probably uh, patch those up. Like, ah, it's no money. No money No money to fix them. <laughs> really? Because I feel like I've been fucking self-financing all this myself. <laughs> uh, it's One of the things I wanted to ask you, so, like, you know, in this, you get to the president's office, the Oval Office. Uh, you're going to release, like, you know, there's a, especially in the kind of the corners where we hang out, you know, like, we want to see those GFA jfk files like we want to see all that you're going to release that to the public you're going to let everyone know so so uh trump told this big campaign guy uh i forget what his name is it's got stupid money and uh, he said yeah as soon as i'm elected i'll go ahead and release the the kennedy thing and then the, the guy i guess the guy saw him at the, at the at a party and, and asked trump said hey man how come you didn't release the kennedy thing and he said that if you saw what they showed me you would not release it either I know. I saw that too. I mean, I like, what the fuck, but, fuck man? But, why see, but now I'm like, now I want to even, now I want to see it even more. Well, when they it say confirms, it, well, the CIA killed him. Well, yeah, dude, 100%. when they, when they confirm, when they said the recent one where they're like, okay, they're supposed to be uh, released. And they said, no, it's a nat it's a matter of national security. Therefore we're not going to release them. What does that mean? National security. Well, I, I'm Trust hoping me. that I'm hoping that uh, Trump in his uh, lame duck session, you know, after they, that's all the presidents, you know, just give all the pardons away to all the people that gave them money, that he'll just go ahead and release that. Because yeah. at that I point, mean, what difference does it make? He's out, right? Just, I, I want to know so bad, because we've, we've talked about it. We did case file on it. We've talked to a bunch of people who, about it. it there's, just too, there's just too much that doesn't add up from, the, from a, just... Lee Harvey Oswald, who was in Russia and back and forth, and all of a sudden they let him back in, and then he's a solo shooter, and then on his trial, he gets murdered. <laughs> right, like, and they never asked him about, all, about any of his past, and all that information was available yeah. at the trial. They never asked him that stuff. He gets murdered right, by that, somebody interrogation, I mean. who was in MKUltra. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's the CIA did it. It's a fucking... There's no way. Jack Ruby... It was a concerted effort between many parties. But, but you know, he's he's an agent. He's an agent. He had to know that as soon as he did this, they were going to kill him. Well, they were control. They used 
MK Ultra to fucking control his mind. He was a Manchurian candidate. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, like right, he had but no he, control but had, over what he was doing. I know, but he still had to know that they're going to kill him afterwards. Oh, oh yeah. Because you saw him how they were dragged, you know. Yeah, because you saw how they were dragging him around. He was like, oh, it's just only a matter of minutes, you know, for that next bullet, for that bullet to come. Yeah. So, oh, uh, yeah. 100%. He was a uh, marked man instantly. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was, he knew there was no way. You got like, to you you kill the killer. Clean up, yeah. Clean up all the ends. Now, so we got your. You're gonna. You you. If it doesn't get released, you're you're saying you're making a commitment to us right now. For some. Sure. For okay. Us. Let me see that. So it's it's two years. <laughs> it's two shirt. years in the in the Senate. It's four years in the governors, and then, so six years from now, the end of my first term. Uh, I was gonna release the alien stuff at the end of my first term. Okay. Well, so we'll oh. start with that. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. I gotta, I gotta have the government. I gotta have the government together on one footing, like, yeah. like stabilize when we we tell them that it actually the government is actually what's the one been training be been betraying you. Now, what do you think about? Because you're in Nevada, so Bob Lazar. You do you know the story of Bob Lazar? Tell me the story of Bob Lazar. Well, just pretty much Bob Lazar claimed he worked at Area S four, which is Area fifty one, like a sub base, and they had alien technology. But he says he was on the podcast with Rogan, and he, when they're talking about it, he says they excavated some of these craft. They found a bunch of craft and some they excavated out of the earth, meaning they'd been here for a long time. It's crazy. So, do you think alien and, is it aliens or are well, they a modern phenomenon, or is this something you think that might be going on for a long time? And just to just to add, just to add to that, he he also <laughs> is like the first whistleblower, and everything he said, you know, was basically factually true. Uh, and he says he came forward because he figured if he came forward and then he was killed, <laughs> that uh, you know no one would not be- like he they would believe him. So it's like it would be better to keep him alive and try to disprove him than to kill him and to make him a martyr. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he that's yeah. why he came forward. And a lot of the stuff he said has come you know to pass, so to say. Well. Um... The thing is, not, like I said earlier, uh, it's not our population that you got to worry about. Now, there's obviously been, been other governments that have the same information that we do, whether they stole the information from us or they found their own aliens. So uh, there's a reason why they haven't done anything like that, because they know what, what kind of insurrection and stuff, because you have no idea what your populace is going to do when you believe that kind of information, right? Now, how it should happen is everybody believes in whatever God they believe in, so believes in that God. They can conti- it continues on, and no one's gonna you know except you know, you've got people then concerned that you know the earth is gonna be taken over by aliens, and so you've got to worry about all that, and so uh, to release that kind of information, uh, you could do piecemeal or you could just release it all at once as like a big dump, and that way right. it's just like all out there, and there's so much to absorb that you can't really make a stance on it one way or another, and you know you make the you make the plea. Uh, the, you know, but but then you, now you've released that into your government and your realm and stuff like that. Now whatever's happening is now gone global. It's gone worldwide. Now some other countries are not as stable as United States, and so it's a lot of these people that are not stable as United States also have nuclear deterrence. Mm. So, I mean, at that point, you got to start thinking about the world as you know, but not. That uh, the people around you and stuff are going to be stable, are going to be uh, sane and stable. That these people, the rest of the people in the world, are they going to be sane and stable? Right. Some of these countries might start pointing nukes at the sky and fucking letting them fly. Yeah, yeah. We got to protect <laughs> the planet. They just start. The next thing you know, you know, you got uh, electromagnetic pulse already wipes out all the electricity. People start panicking, right? Other people start launching bombs and nukes and. There's a big run on the grocery stores and power grid goes out. And so, no, toilet no, paper's just, out everywhere. Oh, well, no, I mean, you've got, you've got <laughs> great you got toilet, toilet paper, paper crisis of 2026. You, you heard about it on this radio show. <laughs> so you went out and you got toilet paper. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, a, you can't listen, be caught. You know, that, that'll, that'll never happen to me paper. again. All right. If there's ever another ne- fucking global pandemic, first thing I'm doing is going to Costco, running them dry. And then I'm going to resell it for 10 times the value. I'm That's a businessman. Right. Take a page out of their book. Just do, do it the desert way. Just use your left hand. Yeah. Oh, shake with the right. Shake with the right. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's good. They never rub your eye. God damn. Yeah. Why is this eye always. We red? have an epidemic yeah. of pink eye. Yeah. <laughs> Conjunctivitis is running wild. <laughs> the new pandemic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, what is your personal belief on uh, like aliens? What do you What are your thoughts on them? Have they visited? Are they visiting? Are they, you know, what, what's your thoughts on well, them? Well, yeah, they've, they've, of course they've visited, but they, I mean, they've given us no more thought than as you would have like approach an anthill. You see it, you don't step on it, you just make a way around it, you observe it and move on. Yeah, but what about the te- I mean, what about uh, the technology like in that in that analogy when like they don't think we think we're an anthill? Well, I mean, but obviously do they drop they're, some technology some they, technology in the anthill and they're, I, they're, I think that that the universe it it's it's inherent for the universe to grow life. Right? And sense. so how many times has this life been wiped out on this planet? Right? Just just human beings, how many times, right? let alone how the other species, other times this planet's just been totally wiped out, right? So, I mean, it's a very volatile universe, right? And so, uh, you know, you visit planets and stuff like that, maybe they do the same stuff that we do. You know, you're out there experimenting and you're checking things out and you find a bunch of monkeys that you want to have sex with and you make some different monkeys. And, <laughs> you know, it's an, it's an experiment. And so you move on. It's like uh, you come back and take a look at it. But... Uh, but to go in and, and like you know what like try to take over a planet like this, I think these people are, at this point are, are way beyond all of, all of that. Maybe there's I mean, like, if they're, if they're traveling the galaxy, the right. inter- intergalactic porn stars perhaps, and they're making videos on different planets. Well, I, yeah, I, I I was snatched. I was more. <laughs> <laughs> have I you ever had an encounter yourself? No, I have not. I've no, seen a lot of shooting stars, but uh, no, no, I've never even spoken to someone who's had a first-person experience. Yeah, uh, but I, I, I believe there's just so much evidence out there. I mean, you can see that some of the stuff that's not everyone's got a phone, and there's like so many pictures of there's just like these lights out of the sky that just like disappear. So either uh, NASA and Area uh, have got so many experiments going on they can't even keep it contained in one little space. Or there's aliens all around the all around the United all around uh, the world. Yeah, I what well, for me, I think I'm somewhere in the middle of that. I think because like the like the spy planes of like the '70s, like the Blackbird and stuff, people seen those, and to them, those are alien craft. So I think some are ours. Some maybe we, we probably have some new craft right now that in 30 years from now, where they're like, oh yeah, we have these fucking anti gravity flying triangles that we were just testing out. And people see them and they call them aliens. But then there's also the real ones that are kind of like keeping an eye on this new technology. So I think there's we're somewhere in the middle on that. It's my personal opinion. So the SR-71 Blackbird, uh, most most fastest plane out there. Right now, they have a ramjet uh, engine that's going to be faster than that. Uh, it's, uh, what the heck's the name of the company? It's called, um, uh, I'm not Buckskin. Um Hold on, I'll think of it. It's some horse name. But, uh, no. <laughs> Quarter Horse. It's called Quarter Horse. And they've got this new Ramjet thing. It's just amazing. And so it's going to be able to to, uh, to, to, to to beat the SR out there. Yeah, the, uh, which is it's just called, amazing. Called craft. The it, X... that, that, what, that thing was built in the 60s, it was 60s, 63 Six, or something 60s, like that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. And still the fastest, fastest craft out there. That's see to me that's like when you say something like that like something built in the sixties is still unbeaten today. I like I'm like really because that'd be like being like yeah my TV from the sixties there's they've never made a better one. <laughs> Cathode ray. Yeah, like only oh, it's this yeah. thing is never like it'll never get smaller. It'll never get better picture. <laughs> it's this is top of the line <laughs> for the next seventy years. Like how, I had the yeah, Sony monitor, the, the big one, the big one that was like this big, right? Oh yeah, and it was so heavy, it was so thick. You had to like four people to have to, to get the thing moved. It was crazy, yep. but that was top of the line. It was like, oh, cathode ray. Oh. My my parents, I remember my parents they bought a big screen like when I was like ten. It was like a huge Sony, and it was like five feet tall and eight feet deep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, those first those first flat screens, they're like the rear projection flat screens. Oh yeah. But they were like four hundred pounds to move. People just got to the point where they would move their house to be like the TV stays. All right. Yeah. It's like a fucking TV. 
Once you put a grand piano yeah. in the house, then, you're like, ah. When it was out on the streets, the kids would go take the screen out of it because you could play with it because it was like a reflector. But then you could do like dollhouse shows in it because you could sit inside. <laughs> <and> <laughs> live in it. Yeah, I mean, it is pretty crazy that a plane that from that long ago is still the fastest plane ever flown in atmosphere. And then it's also crazy that the greatest rockets ever built that took us to the moon were also at the same time. It's like, where, where are they? Or is that, are, are we just like suffering from some type of like propaganda? We're like, yeah, that's the best we ever got to. No, well, no, I mean, for the, as far as the rockets are, we ran out of Nazis. That's... <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's very true. Yeah. So yeah, once you run out of Nazis, then Russia got the other half. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, that obviously they, they didn't treat their Nazis very well because they're not doing very well in the, in the space race. Yeah, too shit. No. Yeah, but it's it's interesting because you always kind of wonder, like you know, like we kind of touched on earlier, like is that was that a time where did we reverse engineer something that we we're like, and we made all these breakthroughs, and then we're kind of like, that's now it. we're stagnant because we're like, fuck. Well, I mean, they got. I mean, you can only go so far with rockets, right? And so the you know the German engineers got the stuff, got the rockets situated where they just as good as they could possibly get them. And then with American ingenuity, we're able to refine the, the metals to make the project actually happen, right? To so make the metals that actually take the heat uh, and take the atmospheric ch pressure changes and uh, the electronic connections, you know, and th the fact that, that all this stuff's got to be wrapped uh, to keep the radiation from killing both the passengers and uh, destroying the equipment. So, so, you know, there's only so far you can go with, with that. I mean, obviously, right now, uh, Elon Musk has got his own stuff going on. They're going at it with a whole different uh, attitude and a whole different angle. Uh, and so uh, it's, I mean, it's only a matter of time before we get to the part where popular mechanics said that we'd have flying cars by now. Yeah. yeah. We're close. Sorry. I didn't mean to go there. No, we're, 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 we're getting close there, but we got, <laughs> we got some, we got drones. I mean, we got drones, but like, we listen, got... the, People are just gonna like die wildly, wildly <laughs> fire like crashes. Like there's, you're not gonna be able to make these it's okay. cars safe. It's enough. okay. I'm not driving. I'm in my drone. <laughs> yeah. Like, Hand, unless we I'm can hands make free. these things hundred percent hands free. Like yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be. You're gonna be. These things are gonna be falling out of the sky <laughs> if we let anyone drive them. What? <laughs> like. How well, a flying car takes out house. Well, it's they'll be all fun. automated. They'll all be all controlled, oh, I, and then I, that's I, the way they can crash them on purpose. Government hits will never be easier. Yeah, it, it <laughs> is crazy that autom like, like the personal automobile has not really changed in a hundred years. It's true. Like flying cars, maybe not. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's, if you fall, if a car falls out of the sky from whatever a hundred feet, yeah, you're gonna blow up. But what about like? <laughs> we we have maglev trains and like technology that you could technically fly on the ground. Like there's a lot of stuff we could do, but we just are like it's too expensive. We're never gonna be able to change the infrastructure. Let's just keep keep the cars. Well, it's all the companies though. Like you can't you're gonna bankrupt all these companies changing the technology. They're gonna exactly. start from scratch. Like yeah. it's we haven't done anything as a as a nation uh since like uh the Suez Canal or the Panama Canal. Uh, we just help with we help with the money at the Suez Canal, but the Panama Canal, and we build our national highway system, right? So you need to take the national highway system where you got two lanes here and then two lanes here and space in the middle, and need to make it four lanes here and four lanes here with the space in the middle. And right now uh, they've got uh, and run train tracks, but right now they've got little cars that fit inside one train track and go one one direction. So then you could have like train sections in the middle that walk across the highway. So you maintain it all. And then the middle section could just be handling cargo. So you get all the tractor trailers off the highway. We haven't done anything like that for the net. And they, they did that in record time using the Army Corps of Engineers. So until you build it, they're not going to come. Yeah. Yeah. Fuel of dreams. You're like, okay, here's our, here's the national highway. Now we've made all this space like this. Now, Who's going to put these tracks and stuff in the middle of this? Oh, we will. We will. No, we will. Yeah, put the nation yeah, back if you to work. work. Yeah, if you, yeah. So, yeah, the infrastructure. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of space out there. I mean, obviously, uh, a lot of stuff. I mean, there's some stuff. We're talking about the national highway system, not so much inside the cities and stuff like that, although national highways go through the cities. 
but it would be a lot of money that would have to be spent at a state level for doing their highways like that. But once you do the big highways at the federal level, before you get into the city municipalities and stuff like that, then they're going to be motivated to do it because you don't want to be the only city that, yeah, you got all these lanes coming into just what you had before. Exactly. Yeah, it's a huge. So you're motivated as a city to do it, to fix it. We need something like that, though. Yeah, like the what's the highway system? Like that's like World War II era, right? Where yeah, yeah. And it was like so many hundreds of millions of dollars, which would be billions of dollars now, if not trillions. Which well, we have we have billions. We've we've established that we have billions to send overseas or do this or that or the other thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have yeah. the, the money. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, my personal thought on the money is like they know the money supply is going to crash and they're actively working behind the scenes to develop a replacement and they want to get all the rich people in on board first. They're going to collapse the dollar, turn it to some type of digital currency. And if you're not oh, the on board, they're, they're, trying, they're trying so hard with the digital currency. But if you're not on board and then the rich people are going to transfer all their dollars into this digital currency and then everyone else is going to have to start from scratch again and then the whole system just restarts. That's what kind of what, to me, I'm like, why else would they just com completely keep bankrupting everything? It's not just the states. It's pretty much every Western country. It's like, yeah, we just spend and we'll just keep pushing the debt ceiling. It'll be fine. Well, <laughs> I believe that when Reagan bankrupted the USSR, right, they, they literally drove them. The only way to, to beat them without going to war with them was actually to bankrupt them. Right. So we just spent more money than they had. So if the plan is we just keep spending money and everybody else keeps spending money and we're going to be the last, the last dragon standing on the hill. When everyone else has gone bankrupt, that's one philosophy, one way to do it. Uh, there's a name for it. I forget what it's called. Uh, something in political science class. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's. But if it, any, any, if any, but and if any of that fails in that progression of how you wanted to do this by keep spending money and have everybody keep spending money until the people below you go bankrupt, and if anything happens in that progression where it goes against you, then you end up being ones that fall. Yeah, I'm, yeah, it seems it's it's right there. That, I mean, that must be the strategy because they're doing a pretty damn good job. Trillions and trillions of dollars. Yeah. yeah, oh, you have you have, you have billion dollars, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Remember the bridge to nowhere? Do you guys ever remember the bridge to nowhere? That's a that's a Sam Roberts song, I believe. <laughs> it's a, no, no, it's it's all the pork belly spending and stuff that goes under these bills and stuff. And so it was a. $30 million bridge something in Alaska that had a population of 40 people in it. Mm. But it oh, just, yeah. you know, it's a, yeah, just a way to pay back the, the, the governor for our, the governor for voting for them on, or the, the Senator for voting for the, whatever the feds were saying they needed at that particular point in time. Right. Uh, we, we had something like that too. It was called the arrive can app. <laughs> it was, uh, two engineers won a government contract working out of a garage and they were going to build this app for Canada for during the pandemic. When you land in Canada, you can download the arrive can app, enter all your information and, and then be on your way real quick. And they won the bid with $5 million. And that app I think has run up to $60 million to develop. And you're like, and it's like two guys working in a garage. You're like, how? No, I don't think, I don't think the guys, I think what the story is, the government contractors got the app for five million, and then two guys in a garage rebuilt the app in a weekend for like twelve oh, yes. for twelve grand. And they're like, "This is yes. the app. We built this in a weekend for fun." And they're like, "But we paid those guys that much money." Like, eh, well. like six, 60 million or whatever the fuck it was. Well, it oh is no, we we spent we spent twenty million on a website that that failed, and then they spent another twenty million. That was uh, during the Obama thing for something. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy, way. man. You, the government will save money no matter the cost. That's always going to be. <laughs> I'm going to use that. I'll yeah. save you money no matter That's the cost. That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, oh, yeah. that is absolutely. It is brilliant. the motto though. Like with this, keep yeah. spending money. We'll save you money by spending all your money. And you're like, all yeah, right. We'll oh, yeah, of course. It sounds like yeah, a good no idea. You don't, the you don't understand how the, how the how the you don't understand how the economy works. Well, obviously, we know better than you because it's failing under your administration. It takes money to make money, all right, Evan? <laughs> you got to spend money to make money. It's got to spend your money to make your money work for us more. It's pretty much. <laughs> it's a, you know, it's a, like that's a, I remember a, me and Andrew worked with a guy and he bought this boat. And uh, we were like, hey, you bought a boat. And he was like $12,000 or something. And we were 
we were like at the age where you don't have that kind of money at all. And he was like, you got to spend money to make money. And I was like, don't think that's how I it works. Don't, <laughs> I don't understand quite how buying yourself a boat is going to lend yourself to making more money. Maybe, right. maybe he buys the boat, then he rents the boat out and he makes money on yeah. the boat. Or maybe he's fishing. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he's maybe running drugs. Maybe yeah. he's running yeah. drugs. There yeah. you go. You know what, I there's, guess there's a lot of things you could do with a boat. You know what? There's a great spot to run drugs uh, just south of us. We live right, right near the border. Uh, it's a Soyuz lake, and the border goes right through the lake. And there there has been people busted using submarines. No, really? Little su- submarine drones, and they fucking smuggle drugs under the water and pop it up like 2K down the lake, and then they take them out. That's hilarious. So now I think the state wow. has underwater like sonar looking for drug smuggling drones. And also we have like a 40 rivers that run. I mean, there's endless ways yeah, during the water to get. And the border is undefended. Yeah, you could literally walk what, across and spot. What do, what do you guys need? You guys need fentanyl? We got plenty. <laughs> oh, we got plenty oh, of fentanyl. Yeah, Don't worry about fentanyl. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think we might have. Actually, I think, we, I think that's one thing Canada has more of than the States is actually fentanyl per capita. Yeah. I think, I think oh, yeah, we win. Dude, any with the fent bent going on. Yeah. They're on pause. <laughs> I'm surprised it makes I'm surprised that anything left over makes it through Chicago to you guys. Oh no, we have yeah, a, we get ours we, straight from China. Yeah, my, yeah we get yeah, ours, ours right from, from the source. Oh no, ours ours goes to China to Mexico and then to here. Oh, yeah, okay. see, you so got straight made, from China. That's yeah, that's great. Yeah. And listen, your stuff's probably getting cut up too. Our stuff we got the oh, pure, yeah, yeah, we got the yeah, good stuff yeah. up here. Our fentanyl, oh, no. our fentanyl is killing people. Yeah, oh yeah, it's not ours ours too. No, it's car fentanyl. They cut ours uh they cut ours with benzos a lot. That's the it's brutal. Yeah, I've never seen everything else underneath the kitchen. You know what? I, I've said it. A, I've said it a whole bunch of times. But I'm like, when we look back at this time in history, you know, in 20, 30 years, uh, even though they're trying to say, ah, oh, you know, we're oh, we just missing the reset. We're not gonna almost a recession, everyone. You know, it's all good. Almost not going to. We're gonna look at this time in history as another Great Depression. Like, there's never been more people on the streets. There's never been more addiction issues. Like. Like, just any. I live in a fucking small town now, and that shit's here. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's everywhere. It's so we're we're you're never gonna pull the wool over my sin that like, oh no, this was a great prosperous time. Like, this is a fucking terrible time, and we just don't know it. Everyone was just kind of like, Ugh, it's bad everywhere. But I I really think in like twenty thirty so years, are you gonna like, believe? Are you gonna believe your government or your own eyes? My own eyes. Oh yeah. No, no, no. You need to believe the government. The government yes, always sorry. tells you the truth. Sorry. Government has your best interest hey, at yeah. heart. Hey man, I'll believe your government. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. We're we're listen. When yeah. you get president, you got to make us a pact here. I don't yeah. know if you can sign us off on some uh, dual citizenships, get us passports. You know. Hey, we can want you, jobs. No, you we can't. Want, yeah, we want some jobs. <laughs> you can't. America. I think in the states, you have to be born there to be any part of the government. I, I think. Oh, yeah, can. Dan. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure the CIA has operatives that aren't born here in America. Oh yeah. Hey, listen, we'll take any gig. All right. Yeah. As long as we're we open. Passport, right? Oh yeah. Open Sirhan, for Sirhan was born in Palestine. He was a government agent. <laughs> Honestly, though, every every like government, anyone who's running for government and on any level should have to sit down for like a one or two or three hour podcast, have a drink, and just talk. No script. Yeah. No script. No other people, and just actually find out what the, like what who is that guy. Or that girl. Oh no, they're terrified. They're terrified. They won't do oh, yeah, anything yeah. live. But they should. Oh, that they, should be like a requirement. All, yeah. So I called up the Republican Party here in Nevada. Uh, my campaign manager did, and said, "Hey, man, we want to be down for the debate." They go, "Oh no." So oh, it's he says it's two weeks away. Oh no, we've already filled it. He goes, "What do you mean you've already filled it? It's two weeks away." No, no, it's just we we got the uh, we got the the vet and we got the cooking guy and the comedian. And, you know, I can tell she, she you know, and I, I called her myself. I go, what, what's going on here? And she goes, oh, no, we're already full. I go, well, what happens if one of these guys doesn't make it? Oh, uh, well, that's never happened. But, you know, even even then, we wouldn't allow you. I go, well, how do you have a decision like this if something like this has never happened when someone didn't show up? So, obviously, they looked me up and decided not to have me on their thing. So yeah, I talked to my attorney. He said, "Yeah, we can we can go there with this, but you just want to piss off the Republican Party right off the bat." I said, "Ah, we got our own campaign. We got our own campaign idea. That's not even going to have to deal with these people. It'll be a popularity thing. I didn't want it to be a popularity thing. I wanted to be a situation where 
we talked about policies like this, but they don't want to play ball with me. So I will play ball yeah. in my own ball game and then uh, they can come and play if they want, but they got to bring their own ball. It's uh, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's such a weird, like a, like a weird thing to like, do you think they're doing that just because of your, of your, of your past as an adult performer? Like, why do you think they're doing Of course. That? Is that why? Like, of course. It, to me, I'm like, it's such bullshit because i'm like some of the fucking shit that comes out from some of these other like you know big political party members you're like this is way worse this is way oh, yeah. like way a thousand they just times. had they just had set they just had butt sex on the house floor yes yeah, right? the house floor what yeah what i what i miss you never saw oh, yeah, that yeah. Show? no you whoa, whoa, the what happened porno who from did the porno who? Yeah, some staffers, some Democratic staffers. Which one? I'm going to download right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they went. They went oh, no, I got, the, I got the link on my phone. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah, send it over. <laughs> um, but you said, you know what, Andrew, I, you said something there and that uh, foreign people can't hold uh, political office. But isn't Ted Cruz Canadian? I'm, you definitely can't be the president if you're not He might American. not be Canadian. But he ran for it. I thought pretty... he was born in Canada. Pretty sure he's the Zodiac. Yeah. Not, Is Ted Cruz yeah. Canadian? Yeah. No, but had, he's the Zodiac. Yeah. Well, Evan, when you get uh, when you get up there, will you uh, make sure there's a task force assigned to see if, in fact, Ted Cruz is the Zodiac killer? We've we've run with that. Conspiracy. Ted Cruz was born in Calgary. <laughs> yeah. What, what the fuck? fuck? Yes. He's Dude, Canadian. that tracks. Oh, Listen. All right, this yeah, is an NPR article on Albert, it, actually. So barely Canadian. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. it's NPR. It's got to be. It's got to be right. <laughs> okay, he renounces Canadian citizen citizenship, but only in 2013. Can you do that? I guess so. You can't. You still. Hey, listen. You're still Canadian. The U.S. Constitution says presidential candidates have to be natural-born citizens, but the Supreme right, Court right. has never weighed in on with the definition, leaving it open to interpretation. Interesting. He's Canadian oh. from Calgary. Oh. That's crazy. Hmm. Yeah, he is. Well, no wonder he's so smart. Well, I guess okay. So John McCain uh, was not Calgary, 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 not Calgary, not Calgary. Listen, hey, listen, especially right now, right now, right now we got you it. Guys are, you guys are racist. All right? No, 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 no. We're, we're, hey, we got a pro. Nothing Albertan right now. We're, yeah, we have a, we have a big hockey Alberta. rivalry going on right now. Everyone sucks yeah. over there. We're in the playoffs against an Alberta team. They're scum. They're all scum. We don't want to talk about them. But no, here it They're is. All though. John McCain, backwater hillbillies. John McCain eyes. was born in <laughs> Panama, on a military base. So technically, yeah, was born on that. American soil. Soil. Yeah. So yeah, hey, I guess it uh, doesn't don't matter. Look up the White House video. <laughs> can I pull it up? <laughs> no, no, don't no, don't. If no. I pull over this, <laughs> and then you can see it on the stream. If I go put it over here. Yeah, you don't want to though. It's and not, then it's, it's just. It's not good. Well, like a, like a one I mean, out of some ten. Some people might be into it. Not really my thing, personally. Is it like a, like a production? Like they set up well, lights and they did the whole thing. Well, it's funny, Andrew. I thought amateur stuff was your thing. <laughs> it usually is, but not this context. <laughs> He's not into po political porn, all right. That's where he draws the line. I'm good with political porn. I just usually like it when there's a lady involved. <laughs> Oh, it was gay porn. Well, not, oh, yeah. not that there's anything uh, wrong with nothing that. Nothing wrong, wrong with it. I cares? never said that. But I'm just talking that. personally. For Pers yes, I mean, you can still lady, have preference. It's fine. Lady, bottom, lady, bottom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, when I wanted to ask you, when you were in, uh, when you played the porn Nazi in the Seinfeld Triple uh, X parody, uh, <laughs> yeah. no cock for you? Wait, wait, no, what, no what cock for you. Huh? What, what, what was your saying? Because I never saw it. When I saw that one, I was like, "How? I'm a huge Seinfeld fan. How did we miss and it? I was like, how did I miss that? Well, you probably walked out of the commencement speech. Oh, no, that was somebody else. <laughs> well, what was the... Uh, uh, what was the... Uh, what was the line? Did you say when... Did you say, like, no sex for you? No, it was no, no soup for you. It was, just pretty, it was straight no up soup. Seinfeld, yeah. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. Wow. But then they just have sex in the soup shop or something? Uh... I don't think I even had sex in that movie. I think I was just, uh, they just brought me in for the cameo. <laughs> <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> nice. Phenomenal. It's awesome. All right, Evan, we usually, we usually cap uh, our interviews around an hour. So if people, uh, I mean, we're Canadian, so obviously we can't vote for you, but if people want to learn more about your platform or uh, what you're up to, where can people find you? 
Oh, uh, Evan Stone for uh, Evan Stone for America. Evan Stone for America. F O R America. Hell yeah. Evan Stone for Congress. Yeah, you can see me on there. I don't talk too much about policy because I want people to understand the complexities of the policy. So I, that's why I didn't put anything policy on my on my website because then it's all written down and then you're like it's carved in stone and you're always stuck to that. Yeah. Uh, every, everybody's everybody's everybody on the Republican Party that people are running against right now all have the same stuff. They all say, well, I want to I want to figure out, clean up the homeless list and all this other stuff. But what's the fucking plan? I just yeah. told you what my plan was. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so everyone's got the same thing. So my whole deal with these guys, I'm not even going to mention their names. They're two guys that have already run and lost. And in America, you can run a campaign and make money, uh, not actually cash money, but you can make money running a campaign and lose. Right. Just running campaigns and losing. So I don't know if these guys are doing that again because I don't know what they're bringing to the to the plate, which is new. I see nothing to bring the plate to news. So I got two losers coming up. Uh, going to try to beat this lady, the, the Democrat who's already been incumbent since 2002, I believe. Oh, and the other guy's a comedian, which I believe he's just doing it for just publicity. There you go. Lock them up. All right. Hey, we appreciate you taking the time to come chat with us, talk some aliens, talk a little porn, a little politics. Anytime. We'll talk awesome. again after my primary. All right, we're going to take a short yeah. break for the stream. Uh, Evan, stay on the line with us, and we're going to let you go here in a second. One second.